If you think about the number of places Anthony has been and he never sends me pictures, mm -hmm. he sent me a picture of Jensen, which is pretty impressive that he's become a figure when it's a company that 99% of people don't understand what they <laughs> actually do. It's literally in the background Chips. of everything we do, yeah. right? gaming, crypto, and now... AI. And he's now become the face of technology for the most part. He yeah. had an incredible clip speaking at Stanford. He was like, one of the challenges we have with high achievers is that they lack resilience. Was You're it exactly? saying a lot of you have high expectations. You should have high expectations. You're at Stanford. You obviously were able to afford it. You're surrounded by some yeah. of the greatest. But the problem of people with high expectations is they have low resilience. And he talked about and how great companies are not built from intelligence. They're built from character. And pain and suffering builds character. And and I wish you pain and suffering. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, Groove Chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Okay, here we go. Uh, Anand. Yep. You're fresh back from the war zone. Mm-hmm. Um... Any, what do you got from your boots on the ground? You went to San Francisco. How was it? Boots on the ground. I've pretty much been frequenting San Francisco since my early 20s. What are you talking cause... about? Since you were like five. Sure. No, but <sighs> proper San Francisco we as an adult. We used to go. <laughs> no, but as an adult, okay. like, because all my friends are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the, going out. Yeah. The majority of my very close friends live in San Francisco. Yep. So I've seen like the whole transition of, you know, boom time to basically 2021. I was there in the fall of 21 and it was Gotham City, meaning there was zero people in the streets. Yeah, I was there. I mean, yeah. I was there. You were probably there a little later. A few months later. You were probably there in 2022. I was, yeah, I was spring 22. Yeah. So I was there f November of 21. Yeah. And I walked, me and Vivek walked probably like six blocks and we could not find a place to get breakfast. Yeah. It means spring 22 is Joe and the Juice, which is a line on Melrose every day. Yeah. I could not believe there was no one there. So uh, it went from 21 to basically you don't even see humans on the street. Yep. And then... I've gone in 22. You've probably gone a little more than I have in the last 18 months. Yeah. Um, and then I went this past two days and it was a zoo. There was also a conference. There was two conferences. Yes. That mm. I know of. I think there was a third. There so was there NVIDIA. Was NVIDIA, but NVIDIA was in San Jose. I know, but they're all staying in San Francisco. Like people from out of town... There's no hotels in San Jose. They're too expensive. I mean, if you saw the prices, if you went on kayak. I know. So that's my point is that everyone from NVIDIA, there's, there's physically no hotels in San Jose to hold a conference, like especially of NVIDIA scale. Yeah. And then there's the game developer conference, which I'm not <sighs> very familiar with, but there's clearly a ton of people yeah. for that. Yeah. And it felt like San Francisco from a commercial aspect is back. Interesting. Do you think it's just this that weekend? That didn't you think exist next weekend three years ago. Well, that, that, I mean, the conference has a lot to do with it. Remove the conferences, go on a normal day, see what happens. So you've been on normal days where yeah. there's no conferences. What's it like? I mean, it was like the, the hotel lobby of where we stayed at. Complete zoo. Yeah. At 8 a.m. What hotel? Uh, the Palace Hotel. Is that? It's not that nice. That's it's fine. One near market. It's no. on Montgomery. Montgomery. What's the closest cross street? Mm, it's like near the Hyatt Regency. It's okay. near all but that it's stuff. in the mix. It's, it's in like the a, mix, but yeah. I looked on kayak. There were hotels that were going for 4300 a night. Yeah, I believe that. Which uh, uh, no hotel in LA other than Beverly Hills Hotel goes for 4300 a night. Yeah, I mean... We have a lot more hotels. You, you always mention San Francisco is a small city. Yeah. So when, when they do have like, when Salesforce, the peak of Dreamforce, their conference, you, you couldn't even get a hotel anywhere 
in San Francisco. Um, so I, I, I've gone, you know, I go there quite often. And the thing I'll say is that during like business hours, so like you see pockets of people at lunch and you see the pockets of people when they're going home. Yeah. But like if you're out at 4 p.m. or let's say you're out at 7 p.m., there aren't a lot of people just physically walking around. And that might be purely a safety reason because mm-hmm. you don't want to get, you know, accosted. Right. But like it's not like someone been literally going there for like damn near 40 years. What I remember, like the bustling of San Francisco, it's not there yet. It's better than they were 100%. But you, San Francisco, I used to go to like hate Ashbury. You couldn't get a parking spot. You're like every restaurant, everything was busy. It's just like such a different vibe than that. I will say during the day, there is minimal safety risk because I had a two hour Zoom that I just walked around the city yeah. that I was just like doing. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I was going to get killed. Yeah. Which I think yeah. two years ago you forward. probably would have. What's that? Yeah, that's a step forward. That's progress. A two-hour Zoom walking around the streets and not feeling like Grand Theft Auto, uh, that seems positive. Not getting killed. That was your baseline. Not right. getting that, killed? That, that, that's the woke answer. You know, I was able to walk around San Francisco <laughs> yeah. for two hours and not get stabbed. You know, I'm sorry that I needed place. to use the streets for that long, but I needed the sidewalk. I apologize. And thank you for yeah. not murdering me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I politely walked around all the homeless people and I said, yes. I'm so sorry for Unhoused. invading your space. Yep. I will say the badges make it safe. You see people with badges, you're like, okay, they're More not going to kill me because they're at some conference. If I, I <laughs> was at a conference, I would not wear a badge for the sole reason I'm like, I'm taking this motherfucking tourist out today. Yeah. Like if I'm a robber. Oh yeah. Just be a robber and wear a badge. Yeah. Rob someone's badge. Blend in. Yeah. Rob a badge. You could just go around stealing bags and all sorts of, you need a badge and a <laughs> knife. You could clean house at one I, of these if conferences. I, if, this is what I would do. I would rob a badge, walk into a conference, say, hey, you know, part of the NVIDIA Summit, we're offering free bag holding services. I would like to give you a ticket to hold your bag. You can pick it up later. So you know, we yep. know it's so heavy on you. you I'd go. go, boom. I'd collect 200 bags. Get the fuck out. Ugh. Look at that. Yeah, okay. I, I think the, the NVIDIA conference. <laughs> so, so you know, what, what made me actually kind of crystallize the whole point, and I don't think this will matter. I'm walking with uh, Amanda, one of her best friends, and our cousin Anunth, and we're at this random restaurant in the middle of San Francisco. What restaurant? I have no idea. I don't no even idea. know what the name is. It what was kind like of food? 4 p.m. No, we just went to like go hang out, yeah. kill time. Yeah. Nice view. Yeah. Run into Mente and Risa. No way. And I'm like, wow, SF really is like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if Revolve is there, that's different. Maybe it is back. <laughs> it's back. But that was, I, and, they were and working. Risa or? was like, Mente, did you text Anand to come here? And he's like, no. It's like, we just randomly ran into each other in a yeah. random that SF restaurant. That used to restaurant. happen. You know, when we used to go to, uh, Cities, you know, you go to New York, you run into random people. Of everywhere. course, New York, right. you're going to run to everyone. I know, but but SF, that used to do that. No one, yeah, yeah. You, but, your bar for SF being back is so low that I don't know. Running into Mantine <laughs> Risa, I think it's back. I, I you saw one you, person you know and you didn't die. That's your bar. And <laughs> yeah, you're like two back, people, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, well, they were together. It doesn't count. One group. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, listen. So you're standing on. It's back. And so I think there's a massive opportunity for real estate investors. Obviously that's not any of our spaces mm-hmm. that there's so many buildings that are underwater and there's clearly something happening there. The number of people I saw was insane. I know it was a conference. Mm-hmm. I know NVIDIA. You should I know, invest in a office real estate. And there's so many people <laughs> underwater in their buildings. Right. And I, I think there's an opportunity. It's not my, it's definitely it's the, not my to me, the only opportunity is like repurposing the real estate. Either it's for cheap housing or it's for hotels. So Anthony sent me a, a, a picture. He must've been there Monday. Cause I didn't see him when we were there. 
and it was a picture of him and the Wonderco team. Yeah. And Jensen's yeah. in the front. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to tell my kids I saw the new Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, there was a lot of other people in that picture that you may not have recognized. I'm sure, but it, yeah. it's insane <laughs> crew. But the point that Jensen yeah. can make a city, he's like G. He's basically yeah. what NVIDIA, that Jensen's, um, Jensen's. So Jensen's know. a CEO of NVIDIA. Yeah. And so now just he's for, become a public figure, full yeah. blown. He's doing the circuit. Leather jacket. Leather jacket. He's, he's got his the, monochrome. Taylor Swift of CEOs. Yes. yes. He's basically, you know, I think tech was missing a Steve Jobs, right? Like who not only talked about their company and product with vision, but gave you like gems as like a society. Steve Jobs had so many gems. Yeah, like his course. Stanford commencement speech. Yeah, if you've ever, yeah, you ever yeah, yeah. uh, watched yeah. that, highly recommend. If you have never watched it, Google it. It's incredible. Um, but like in his life, Steve Jobs left incredible content for the world to consume. And basically, we haven't gotten that from anyone else. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have the personality for it. Right? He's not gonna. He's not inspiring anyone. He's an incredible founder, but he's not an inspiring founder. The rest of the the founders are basically gone. Bill Gates, everyone's just irritated by. Like, and he's not professionally working right now. Even then, he just we just Elon <laughs> exists. Elon is a, a very in, incredible figure. He's just become polarizing. Yep. yep. So unfortunately you have to now as an Elon Musk fan have to weed out all the constant hate every single day. And cause he's gotten too involved in politics. Yeah. In yeah, my I feel opinion. Like there's a lot yeah, of yeah. shenanigans. Even, he's a, like, even as an Elon Musk fan, like the, oh, I like all the memes and that stuff, but it kind of takes away from like the guru aspect. Yeah. The that genius Jensen of has. his, yeah, the genius of Elon's business acumen, which is clearly obvious. Off the charts. Yeah. yeah, off the charts. One of the greatest founders of all time. But then he gets involved in kind of borderline, are these true stories? Are they not? And yep. he starts tweeting about that. I think it's more the pettiness that has ruined the allure of Elon. The yeah. pettiness. Because I've seen so many people counterfact him. Yeah. And... I'm like, I love okay. him and I love the pettiness. It just takes him, it puts him in a little bit of a different bucket. Yeah, he was he was the Steve Jobs figure. From an actual execution and ability and talent, he's the greatest entrepreneur ever. That's my view. Like yeah. I no mean, one, he's built no so yeah. I mean the number of companies he's built is crazy. Yeah. So to me, he's checked that box. But like society's always looking for a leader that they can like get excited and really and and and, and like not, I mean, if you think about the number of places Anthony has been and he never sends me pictures. Mm -hmm. He sent me a picture of Jensen. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty I mean, eye-opening. I can't think, as far as like <laughs> Anthony and our group of friends goes, I can't, there's, I can't think of who else would be even above on the list that you'd want to share that you were in a photo with right now. Yeah, because yeah. if you Maybe think about like, it, he's never sent me. It's the, probably Taylor Swift. Right. Uh, yeah. Or Travis Kelsey. Either one, sure. one of the, the two. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jensen would be there. Elon. Elon. Yeah. Suck. Elon. Suck. Um, yeah, there's five. Yeah. Let's but he's, he's not sending five. all the other A-list stars that he's always around. Yeah. No, they're not top five. LeBron, boring. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kendrick. Yeah. We've seen it. <laughs> Jensen. That's news. Yeah. And yeah. I think he, 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 he is kind of like. He has such a uh, captive audience at this moment. Everyone is hanging on by his word. They had their big conference. He has these robot fucking dogs and people and whatever, whatever. He's, he knows how to put on a show. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's clearly working. Yeah. Because if you think about who showed up to to view his keynote. Yeah. But that's also a part of like... The brilliance of what Apple was like. Do you remember when like Virgil got invited to like one of the iPhone or iPad releases? Yeah. Like it, it these companies understand the importance of culture. Yeah. Cause like Drake got was, he was part of one of those Apple yeah. conferences too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. a Apple always has recognized the importance of like the culture relevance of those things. I think obviously 
Steve Jobs around probably brought in more superstars. Like, I don't know if Tim Cook has the same clout with talent like these guys do. But I'm like, yeah, if you get like a, like, by the way, like, I don't even, no one knows what NVIDIA even does. You know, it's like, yeah, GPU, CPU, chips, right. whatever. The average person has no fucking clue, but everyone knows what the company is now. Yeah. And they know it's a part of the journey. So like he's, he's, he's doing like consumer marketing for a, basically a business to business company. And a very technical company. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty impressive that he's become a figure when, like you just kind of alluded to that. It's a company that 99% of people don't understand what they actually do. I have no idea. It's really in the background Chips. of everything we do, right? Chips. Gaming, crypto, and now AI. And Doritos, he's, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's now become the face of technology for the most part. Now, every interview, every clip he ch- does, he posts. I posted his clip this mo- last night. Yeah. He had an incredible clip speaking at Stanford. Well, he was like, one of the challenges we have with high achievers is that they lack resilience and you have to suffer high expectations. Yeah. Um, is that what he, what, how, what was You're it saying exactly? A lot of you have high expectations. You should have high expectations. You're at Stanford. You obviously were able to afford it. You're surrounded by some yeah. of the greatest, but the problem of people with high expectations is they have low resilience, low resilience. And he pauses for like 10 seconds. Did he have the leather jacket on? Of course. Yeah, of course. He's a rock star. And, but like, he, he he's like, if you have not ex- experienced suffering and pain, then you don't, you don't have the resilience to yeah. actually be successful. And he talked about and how great companies are not built from intelligence. They're, they're built from character and pain and suffering builds character. And we need, I wish you pain and suffering is essentially the. And this was to undergraduate students? He didn't say. It just said yeah, Stanford I students. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think. And and the thing is, if you're a Stanford student, you you probably in your entire to get to Stanford, you've probably been perfect your whole life. So right. your expectations are very high. So like, ha- have have those people ever lost? No, man. I, I think so. Another another point. <laughs> I know you've tweeted a few things in the last twelve hours that I've seen. That. Everyone is just talking about AI. It's annoying. I know you're annoyed by it. I fucking hate it. I was yeah. there like my 12, 24 hours in San Francisco. Everyone's AI. It's just AI. And how does it apply to you? Right. AI, so annoying idiots. That's the problem what AI is I actually think me. AI is like, you know, it's not fake. Like it's not NFTs, but, but, but it's so fucking popular that I, like, I don't even want to hear like about you, it anymore, which is probably get, like, not alarmed. good. You get alarmed because it's so popular? Here's no, the problem. like, what I'm saying is this, like, <laughs> even though I don't think it's a fad necessarily, I think it's overhyped for the applications at the moment, but I don't think it's a fad. The problem is I'm just so sick of hearing about it that I don't really want to talk about it anymore, which is probably bad because everyone, any entrepreneur should be looking into it and continuing to be educated on it, but I'm just getting so sick of fucking hearing about it. I mean, every conversation I have with another company that's not in retail, they lead with AI and I laugh. Like so, there can't be 6 million people working on fucking so, AI. Right. So, you know, uh, I, I t- like we've talked about the new brand I have. Are you well? Yeah. Our Instagrams are you well dot AI. <laughs> right. I saw that. Is it? It's, you know, yeah. it's smart. I told you it's that like, new golf driver is called the AI smoke. It's, it's nothing. It's like when oh everyone's, uh, what was everyone's thing? Dot. What was your, you had to change your, uh, Oh, dot ETH. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah dot ETH during when NFT you had to world. Change yeah. your, your Twitter during profile. NFT. So yeah. Elad Gill, who's like a very famous, uh, tech investor had a great tweet. He's like, we're living through the AI equivalent of ZERP. It's just too much. Yeah. Basically, like everything in AI is going to get funded. Like yeah. SERP, everything got funded for 12, yeah. 15 years. So Jeff Morris, who you know, who's an yeah. investor, he's a native San Francisco person. 
Um, he says this, I say this as a fan of San Francisco. After seeing many AI startups crash and burn over the past month, convinced that many of the best AI companies won't be based in San Francisco, too many meetups, too much money, too much worrying about competition. When will we learn? So the thing that I agree about it is that the echo chamber of San Francisco is just AI, right? Like you, you cannot raise money if you're not talking AI. And I've met with funds in the last couple of weeks, just, you know, catching up. And they're like, yeah, man, we can't even invest in anything if it's not AI. And I'm like, why the fuck are you here? Yeah. <laughs> it's just too much. We've seen this story so many times. I'm not I, saying I don't AI understand is how nothing, VCs but. do not understand that. Like, think about it. Not everyone can invest in the space. There's just not that many good companies. No, absolutely not. Not even close. Like there's probably. I mean, how does, if, 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 if the. But they don't <laughs> learn. No. And they also have raised money right. and they have, they have to deploy it. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. But it seems like the perfect time to actually invest in other companies because the AI companies are so overvalued. Yeah. The seed rounds and the whatever, whatever. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see see how it all plays out. But well, we know what will uh, happen. There's going to be a handful yeah. of massive AI companies. AI is going to change things a lot. And there's going to be an absolute, not to use Trump's words here, but bloodbath of, <laughs> of bubble popping just ridiculousness. I mean, there's, yeah. you know that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, like if you look at just what recently happened yesterday, there's a company called Perplexity that was started by the DeepMind co-founder. He had raised a $1.3 billion last summer. Mustafa. Mustafa. And he, um, it looked, it, it is appearing to be a bit of an aqua hire, a very clever aqua hire by Microsoft. Because the way they bought the company or way they're working it is they hired Mustafa and I think their CTO, their network, several other key members are going on to Microsoft to run their AI consumer division. Then he's, Satya structured a uh, licensing agreement to make the investors basically whole. And... It's probably the right move. The, it was, the company was valued at $4 billion. The execution you need to have to be worth 10, 20, 30 billion, you know, is insane. You know, Sam Altman kind of won that battle as far as like, this was a direct open AI competitor perplexity. So, like, great fucking. So, so how does Microsoft rationalize that, right? Because they own 49 or 50%. Is it 49 or 50? Of something? Open AI? Uh, open AI? Yeah, 49. And then now Mustafa comes in and he's CEO of AI, of Microsoft. Consumer AI. Consumer. So separate from what Sam's running? Se separate. So consumer means- I mean, isn't ChatGPT consumer? Yeah. So this is Bing and co-pilots for like Excel, Word, things like that. It sounds, if I'm Sam- I would be like, what are you doing? Well, hiring this guy. I'll tell you why if I'm Sam, I, I'll tell you why I think it was a great move for everyone. If I'm Sam, he doesn't have any competitors. At Sam the Altman is who we're talking about. Yeah. Sorry. The, the only real com com competitor out in the universe is Google, right? Like at scale that can compete with him. This guy raised a bunch of money and was building something that's similar. Took out his competition. They're changing to some new business model, new concept, whatever. So now one competitor gone. Second, basically shelve him. Go work on Bing. <laughs> Bing is not going to exist. What's ChatGPT? Shout out to Eric Deluxe. Yeah, <laughs> Bing.com. But like, it, I don't think Microsoft gives a shit about Bing. So you think they just bought them to basically... Keep them aside. Do you remember when like... Uh, Which so, is not a bad business decision. This is what Interscope was doing with white rappers in the 90s. <laughs> they signed them all. Yeah. And, and fucking shelved them. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a strategy. Yeah, it is. It's a strategy. It's like buy... It's what Google did, right? This looks great on paper for everyone involved. Oh, this guy becomes CEO of Bing. 
you know, Reed Hoffman and his crew, they get made whole over time. Yeah, Reed. So, you know what I've learned about... Reed Hoffman was an investor I in saw that. perplexity. No, no, no. I saw, I saw his tweet. So, what, what I've learned on Twitter, if you follow tech news, and I don't know if any, how many people that listen to this podcast follow tech news, whenever you see someone overwhelmingly praise an exit that seems kind of fishy, yeah. it probably wasn't good. No. And there's yeah. some kind of like background noise of why it happened. We, yeah. we know a lot of these scenarios. They're getting ahead of the... the but they're also trying to save face because they yeah. don't want to look like bad investors. No, no, of course. They don't want to look like bad partners. They don't want to look like we... Even when like a VC partner gets uh, released... And they just, everyone just goes like, oh my God, I had such a good time great. working with this person. Then why aren't you working with them? Yeah. If they were so great. Yeah. And they're like 38. <laughs> it's yeah. like they're like 79 and <laughs> retiring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's part of the game. And, and the thing is, is, as long as you're not an insider, that trick works on you all the time. Yeah. So the world thinks Mustafa is going to save AI. Well, no, the, the world... So we met Mustafa 10 years ago. Yeah. He's a smart guy. Kind of crazy. Yeah. He actually predicted the future. Not, like, full disclosure, we met with Mustafa, me, D, and a friend of ours that we had a small company, and everything he said yeah. actually happened. Yeah. He definitely has a deep mind. Nice. <laughs> well done. But was his company successful or not? No idea, but he definitely had a vision 10 years ago. No, I think he, that's why they're hiring him for the vision, right? Like it's clear that they um, have basically, he's articulated the AI vision from day one. I mean, he told us about AI like 10, 15 years ago. And the interesting thing for me is he was very big on privacy. Yeah. And now you're more public than... You could possibly be. Yeah. You're the head of AI for Microsoft. Yeah. And it's like consumer Microsoft too, which means it's involved. Like everyone's watching you. Yeah. Like senators are watching you. Yeah. What you're you going to have to go. He's going to be congressionally. Uh, he's going to have to no, do a congressional hearing. It's, it's perfect for Seth. Yeah. He doesn't have to go now. <laughs> you know, here's the head of, he's the CEO of Microsoft AI. Yeah, they're sending yeah. his ass to DC. Yeah, that's yeah. smart. Maybe that's the whole point of it, the whole thing. Just put a barrier yeah. between Satya yeah. and Congress. Because he wants he wants to keep <laughs> Satya's making like some executional flawless. He moves. got kind of he's pretty fit now, too. Oh, is he? Yeah, Maybe he all the, the weightlifting paid off. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> something the only thing that's more hype than AI, and I and we have to talk about this, is Kate Middleton. What's yeah. happening? Can someone? Right, so, I'm, I'm, I'm out of yeah. the loop. I, I mean, I realize I, I, you know, I saw the photoshopped picture and the whatever. But what's going on? Have we seen <sighs> a live photo of her uh, in the last 24 hours? So I have not, unless something has come out. I, I mean, don't know because all I've seen is a doctored photo. The video. Then, have you seen the? And you've seen the video. And TikTok is 100 percent convinced she's been killed. You. It's the video that. Everyone. So what happened was, is she basically hadn't been seen since like end of January. And right. then the rumors started going that basically the Royal family smoked her. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they, yeah, yeah, you know, it. no, it's just ridiculous. I, yeah, it's just, I'm with you. Which part that they killed her or that uh, people are saying they killed her? No, just the whole thing. Like I read that she was maybe stabbed and there was a domestic violence situation. I also saw that she, potentially has like an eating disorder situation. I mean, it's just the whole thing is just fucking And absurd. there's a potential of him uh, impregnating one of her friends, right? Right, right. That's another rumor. And then That's there was some rumor. domestic violence because of that and she, somebody was stabbed and so it's just wild. And the whole thing is like, we're talking about fake princesses and princes and kings and it's just all <laughs> fucking crazy. But anyway, Warlords, I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and so there was a video that comes out a few days ago, um, uh, showing Prince William and Kate just smiling and walking in some town outside of whatever, London. And let's assume nothing is wrong with her. Yep. Why the fuck wouldn't you just put something out? 
put out a fucking video. Hey, I'm not doing well. I'm sick. The guy stabbed me. My husband stabbed me. <laughs> Whatever it so is. I, like, the, the kind of weird thing that I think about is maybe they do this to stay in the news. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Because everyone's talked about them for the last 10 days or whatever, seven days. No, for a month. This has been a month. So they Maybe know. Maybe she had the flu. They saw the news and they're like, you know what? Let's Sit your ass back going. in there. Why don't you chill out a little bit longer? Because they went viral on every social platform. Everyone was talking about it. I had a friend saying that. It's the Marvel universe for women. Right. I like, mean, imagine if you just, Kate if you Middleton. needed press, imagine you could just stay home. Imagine like yeah. you wanted to like get press for ghost or anything you're doing. And, and you learned that if you just stayed inside for a month, the <laughs> whole world would be talking about you. You'd be like, ah, fuck it. I want to play okay. with the kids. I, I like that theory. That's a, that's a very good theory. Yeah. Cause I don't think she's dead. Why not? Why wouldn't they, they kill say Princess Diana? But we saw Princess Diana die. Did you? The it paparazzi. Was in a tunnel. It was in a tunnel. Yeah, but the paparazzi has the cameras, right? <laughs> Did you see were you the, there? There was. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> it would happen. Conveniently, you you the it. accident happened in a tunnel. Right. I I think this is a whole publicity stunt. I think, hey, you know, Harry and Meghan are taking too much shine. We need yeah. to get in front of them. I saw Trump said he'd deport Harry. Yeah, why, why did that come up? <laughs> I don't just know how it did. I just saw the clip. Yeah. I did too. He just said, he was like, he goes, Trump is de- de- debating on deporting Harry. <laughs> so Honestly, good. that might be a unifying. <laughs> okay. I would love for Harry to be gone. <laughs> that could do it. I, I mean, was a dickhead no. at Lucky's in Santa Barbara or Montecito. Yeah, you so. said it all right. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to have four years of those type of news clippings <laughs> every day. I mean, everyone's worried about, like, what will Trump do with the nuke? He's talking about deporting yeah, Prince yeah. Harry. He doesn't know what a nuclear missile is. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's going to talk shit to fucking Kim Jong-un and deport Rosie Harry. Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, is that our, our, our guess is we don't know, but the whole thing is just insane, right? That's where we stand as a group? I think it's insane, and I think it's fabricated. Yeah, because what she died, and they're just what they're they're preparing. Like if she's a, dead, an alibi should, for a month. The fact that the UK government can't confirm that she's dead, right, doesn't make sense. Well, they're they're hiding it. You Maybe can't instead. hide Kate Middleton's death. Watch. <laughs> All of a sudden, people just stop talking about it, and we'll be like, "What happened to that Kate Middleton thing?" <laughs> I, I think know. like the royal family is so fucked. Yeah. They could have done the craziest shit. This is over. So it's after Harry and William and Kate and Megan. That's done. what you think. If you think they purposely made her stay in the house, let's just say she's completely fine. Just because they said, hey, this is playing well. Because the kids, how old are William's kids? They've got to be at least six to eight. Yeah, sure. Whatever. But we already knew who William was six to eight. I don't know who William's kids are. George. George. You see? <laughs> you know who I see? <laughs> <laughs> you just perked up. <laughs> you know the fucking kid's name. You better, that's yeah, the king. You know George. That's King George. <laughs> Respect the king. Wait, wait till King George is 14 going to clubs in London. He's going to be the, and he's going to be a stud. Yeah. I mean, what's George's his name? Harry was like, you know, notoriously in Vegas and. I mean, little I George saw, will be at Delilah. I saw Harry in London when I was 21. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're talking about these guys. They're just going to be out. Yeah, they're George is at Burr Streets in no time. <laughs> 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 he might get a membership for his 14th birthday. <laughs> um, do you want to talk economy? There's a lot of economy news. Yeah, so I think the, we're going to talk about the Fed shortly. But we have GDP. Um, GD, GDP growth. From a very unlikely place, Goldman Sachs uh, is reporting that uh, we're going to see some GDP growth from everyone's favorite group, the migrants. That they will add 1% 1 to the GDP. 
it, it does feel like propaganda. It feels like when all these stories, now there's really a wave of stories coming out about like uh, illegal uh, immigrant like crimes, like yeah. murders and things. Even I saw some stories that are like actually from 2021 and people that actually came across the border when Trump was um, in office. But everyone's just like, that's going to be the wave is um, really trying to find these assaults and murders and things and, and putting them all over. And yeah. it just this reeks to me of like, no, no, no. This is great for the economy. Look what's already happening. Yeah. And, and, and what I think that gets me nervous is you start putting these types of things out into the universe, then it becomes a talking point to people to say that like, um, so basically they said that uh, 80,000 person boost to the monthly break even rate of job growth uh, is, is from the immigration. They think, um, GDP GDP growth of 0.3% uh, in 2024 and then um they think the unemployment rate so I, I don't understand how they're included in the in unemployment rate right like yeah because they're not documented news. citizens yeah so I don't understand propaganda. that piece but that, but, but, but I can see how they're in the job data but what's interesting is is then if they're in the e economy, then they're now spending. So if you're letting in 10 million people a year that collectively make a few billion dollars, I guess that's net new spend. Right. That's entering the economy. And that's how a lot of these. That's fake. And yeah. who's it really benefiting? It's benefiting Walmart. It's benefiting basically groceries, some real estate. I mean, yeah. this is nothing but Goldman Sachs forecast, right? This is, yeah. this is fake. This is. Yeah. But I think for them, they're looking at it being like, okay, like I'm sure a lot of people are trying to figure scratching their head. on like, well, how is the, how, how is the economy just still kicking along? And maybe it's because there's this new segment of people here that are spending money. Yeah. Maybe it could be. I don't know. I mean, especially this year. I don't trust any of these type of stories. I, My tinfoil hat is I'm not taking it off until November. What? What's your, you have a non-woke take. Let's hear it. I don't no. think that's what's happening. There's a Republican take about to sneak out of the. the no, 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 no. That it's brain. the opposite. It's the opposite. So what is it? I've listened to bits and pieces of Rogan over the last week mm -hmm. and his view that Chinese military people are walking through. Yeah. Like what's your basis? Well, He's I like, they have crew cuts and yeah, well, yeah, that's ridiculous, but I, I haven't listened <laughs> to, to probably as much and as I you have this week. Respect most of, I, I respect just uh, listening to him and getting a different side. Cause I probably right. don't agree with most of what he says, yeah. but I'm open to listening to it just yeah. to be like, okay, I want to know other ideas. And that theory is getting really pushed on his podcast and it started with Dr. Phil. Right. And Dr. Phil also Eric Weinstein has a really big thing about it. And he went on there too. Look, I think here's what it comes down to is I think that what people are trying to raise alarm to is there's a lot of Chinese men of military age coming over. So military over. age means they're in their 20s. They don't want to live in China. China's Maybe. a terrible place to live. Maybe. Yeah, but you know there's spies in China that are um, Chinese spies in America. The Chinese spies that come to America come in legally. Says who? They come in and get a work visa, work at Google. Work yeah, that at was Facebook, last year. Work that, at, this nah, year this you walk new, over San Diego. You need everything. Hello. You need, also need people that are longshoremen at the ports. Yeah. You need a TSA worker. Yeah. Have you ever been to TSA and JFK? They ain't speaking English. They're taking notes. But my, my point is to assume that these people are all <laughs> Chinese spies. I think it's, it's scary. Kind of ridiculous. I, look, I think I think it's a little and alarming. to just say, like, dude, 
I think the Chinese haircut, if you're 22, is you have a right. shaved head. That's fair. I'll give you that. <laughs> I will give you that. But I think that, yeah. look, when you have large, large groups coming over from an adversarial country, it's not um, like someone has to be helping them or showing them the way. It's a pretty intense process from China, meaning like they're flying to like Honduras or whatever, and then they're going through this whole process. And I think it's more just the fact that like, when things like, do you I, really it, believe uh, the CCP is sending thousands of Chinese people to Honduras to infiltrate America? Why not? Yeah, I'm asking you if you believe that's actually a reasonable. Here's opinion. my honest answer. It's, it's a little more. It, my honest answer is I don't know, and the mystery is what is scary. So just fix it. Why risk it? Like, don't uh, show me videos fixing the of borders, fucking lines. 100%. Right. That's but all my, I'm saying. My point is that. I think it's possible. I think, I think people in China have experienced a pretty tough last four years given yeah, COVID lockdowns and, you know, your, your apartments are sealed. You can't walk out of anything. Right. And they're like, hey, the first moment I get to get a passport or whatever and fly, yeah. they're doing it. Yeah, and I think that's I, that's the Occam's razor. Um, the, uh, the, saying the Occam's razor is these are Chinese spies coming through the Hun, uh, Mexican border is not the Occam's razor. I just but think, I think like that's, when you think about that, the hijackers, that will impact change. That'll impact change. That's when you why think about the hijackers of nine eleven, like they weren't like high level Google infiltrated spies. You know, and like all that I'm saying is I think that you can cause a large amount of chaos in this country with four undocumented people. And if you wished harm on this country, you can do a lot of harm with four people. Look at the Boston Marathon bombings. When it comes to terrorizing, I'm not talking about killing tens of thousands of people. I'm saying scaring the shit out of this country. Boston Marathon, even 9-11, these things were relatively small groups of scrappy people with a little bit of help. And I do got to say, like, why? I don't know. Like, why? Why? why even give us this to worry about? Why even let it be a question? Because we have seen it happen before. And maybe we're just a little traumatized and everyone's over dramatic and people just want to get the fuck out of China and get to the U.S. But why? ignore it and act like it's nothing when you have like a clip of a dude being like you don't know who i am but you will soon and i'm blah 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 and then google saying yeah. that he might be a terrorist from fucking like why are you letting all of this happen <laughs> yeah. when we used to have like a daily we all grew up with or in our young adult life having like daily terrorist warnings of like oh it's red today don't go to a football game oh it's yellow today be careful yeah. when you're traveling like I don't know. It's just fucking it, the, the annoying thing to me. I'm not saying what, what I think they are. I think even trying to guess is a little going down a fear street, but I just wish we didn't have to wonder. Like I wish yeah. there was some explanation. I, I wish there was some part. effort. I agree with that part. Cause but, it is the same. But the narrative the that's going on right now is that because we're just letting working. Chinese spies just run through the right. U S border. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we true. are. Because if four of them are, then you are. Then what if what if but we the were wrong? Chinese spies are coming from Stanford? No, I know, but you're talking about one but very specific coming... type of Chinese spy. If a Chinese, once again, picture Boston Marathon bombing. If two Chinese people came across the border and set bombs at the LA Marathon, it's only two out of let's say twenty thousand crossed the border over the last three years. Two can cause insane harm, and I think it's just sure. Maybe it's overblown fear, but I think. I they're saying those things because the fear of terrorism is the one thing that I think we're aligned as a country. We do not want to experience anymore. So it's, a, it is the narrative that gets people to incite change the fastest because obviously it seems to be very comfortable to let people into this country illegally. Like that is never changing. But we also allow the Chinese government to fund research and at Harvard right. and Stanford. Right. I'm not worried about high level. Know, spying we're talking about Italy. Yes. But, but and we're, that, that we're not talking about that. We're talking about the 8 million people a year that are walking right in, walking right in. That's a, that's the problem of the moment. I think they're both the problem and no one wants to focus on the Chinese government legally just 
infiltrating our biggest I'm sure research that's institutes. The, that's the CIA yeah. CIA's problem. Like we're the problem we're is it's not a this or that. It's like when you see the the, the I'm topic not saying of this the, or that. I'm saying they're both the problem. I'm not saying the border is not a problem. That. But I agree with that. But to me, the border seems easier to fix. It to me. It might be, it might not be. To me, as a normal person, it seems easier to fix the border thing, especially when you're seeing it get worse. I don't know if Chinese spies infiltrating Stanford has gotten better or worse over the last decade. I know that the border has gotten worse over the last couple of years. And so it's just, it's a more of a like, hey, why are we doing that though? Like this is going backwards. Um, and and I yeah. think that's the concern. And I think the concern is not that everyone's a spy or they're sending the, their whole army here or everyone's infiltrating <laughs> or that these are like John Wick high level assassins. I don't think it's that. I, I think the fear is that you have, like I said, like imagine if God forbid this summer someone takes some fucking pipe bombs to a basketball game or a, a, a baseball game and. And we find out that's where they came from and it would just be horrendous. And it's like, it doesn't take a lot of people or a lot of energy. If you really, really don't give a shit and mean poorly to this country, which a lot of people do to do a lot of damage. And so why That's are fair. we risking it so much? Yeah. Hermes, the famous Birkin bag. Did I read this right? There's a, a, a lawsuit. They're having some, some legal issues over their Birkins. Yeah. Um, it's insane. So the lawsuit of course is from the great state of California. Um, <laughs> we're leaders. We're innovators. So it's um, it's it's basically uh, accusing Hermes of conditioning customers to buy other things at Hermes to get access to the Birkin bag. Can Which you explain how the process works? So yes, because it's very complex. So the the real way that you, by the way, this is not just at Hermes. This is at Rolex. This is at right. Ferrari. This right. is at fuckload of places with luxury goods. This yeah. is why this lawsuit is so stupid. Yeah. Basically, this is a lawsuit based around consumer protection. And if you at Hermes, like if you walked into the Beverly Hills Hermes store and want to buy a Kelly bag or a Birkin bag, these are the two most popular bags. They're very coveted. They'll say, oh, we're sold out at the moment. We don't have any. They, they always have them. They're always there. It's just you're, you're not a valued customer to get access to it. Is that really how and it works? So, if you're one of those customers, they almost always have some in stock? Always. Huh. Yes. So from my, and my understanding, because I kind of know the watch, I, even though I don't own any luxury <laughs> watches, so no one robbed me. Don't come yeah. to my house. Don't Robert, rob me. I have yeah. nothing. Um, you have to buy the cheap watches you have to buy what's available. And then you get access to the hot and stuff. And when the hot watch comes, you do it. That's how yeah. watches work. That's a, like Ferrari. You buy one Ferrari, great. You got to keep buying all of them. Right. Every new version that comes out. Otherwise, you don't get them. Right. And so similar to Hermes, Hermes, you walk in, you buy scarves, you buy the belt, you buy some other shit. You get on their VIP list and say, hey, you know, if a Kelly ever becomes or a Birkin ever comes available, please let us know. Great. But you have to spend enough money on the items Regular that aren't shit. exclusive. Yes, yep. exactly. To get the exclusive stuff. Yes. And so this lawsuit is basically saying this is unfair. You're not allowed to like do that. Discriminatory. Basically. Yeah. And so the problem is, is like whoever filed the lawsuit, they opened up a huge can of worms. Because like... You're, are you gonna are you gonna go after everyone that does this? Because almost every luxury business does it. Fucking everything. I was like, I mean, think about how many businesses that are built on this discriminatory, discriminatory types of purchases. Right. It's just how the world works. Uh, the ultra wealth. And it, what is this? This person who's what you, you're 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 broke and you couldn't get Birkin bag, so you're fucking mad and you go sue someone. Yeah. What 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 is the point of this? Yeah, this is just. Well, I think it's just anti-capitalism. Yeah. Because I think it's an angry angry person that didn't get it. A it's anti-capitalism yeah. in the sense that Hermes, Rolex, they can operate their business however they want. <laughs> yeah. If they want to sell to whomever based on whatever criteria, they're yeah. allowed to. 
Yeah, that's just a private yeah, this business. This is just yes. loser, loser logic that has become very I, popular I, lately. You know what I would love for Hermes to do? Just pack up. Let's just leave. Leave the country. Because think about... Say, you know what? You want a fucking Birkin bag? <laughs> right. Fly your ass to Paris, you right. dumb Americans. Because think about It'd probably about be the any, biggest thing for their business. Any night... would go nuts. Because all the Americans any, would go to... Now, oh my God, now I have to go to France and I have to be on the list? Because <laughs> if you think about any nightclub, any private club, yeah. any restaurant, they get to choose who dines. Yeah. It's yeah. everything. It's just a stupid... It's so stupid. something called the Sherman Act. I don't know. That's what they're invoking to like... You know, place place this, this just, lawsuit. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Um, I think if you're a private business, it's not like you're in a public park. Yeah, if you're in a public park, anyone can go enjoy. Like the if the U.S. government made a handbag, sure, right. everyone should get access to it. Yeah, no one would want it, but right. everyone would get access to it. This is yeah, literally this is- the part of the brand. That's their ethos. It's like right. who they are is like, ugh, it's so, it's so, it's so stupid. stupid. Yeah, yeah, no. it's, it's so stupid. stupid on every level because Hermes is obviously like, you know, the most luxurious brand or whatever. Yeah. But you just keep going down the list. Yeah. You have to deal with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, v, uh, VIP at a, at, if you go to Cheesecake Factory every Friday for 10 years, let me tell you, when you pull up, yeah, you, you get, get treated differently. But couldn't you even do it to like that old program where when you buy 10 coffees, you get the 11th one free? Like, that's not fair. Why does the that's frequent true. buyer get a free one? I, I, that's discriminatory. It's like the, everything is some version of that. Any yeah. decent marketing. I think this know. has no chance in hell in court. But it it's has, annoying yeah. that it even exists. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's your it's people insane. on it. Guarantee that's a wokey. But that's why a I'm the wokey. balanced wokey. Yeah, you're right. You've gotten more balanced. I, I feel like in the last week you've. No, it's not the I last a, week. I've I always been like this. In your I've always been a capitalist. Yeah. Ever since Robert waltzed in your front door, I think it scared you straight. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, last but not least, Mr. Beast, who is known for. Um, his, you know, extravagant videos, very stunty. He's given away a lot of money. He's done a lot of stuff like that. A lot of competitions, things like that. He's obviously, you know, uh, I don't know if the numbers say this, but the biggest YouTuber, I mean, he has the craziest views that everything, I'm sure everyone knows who Mr. Yeah. Beast is. He, um, 245 million YouTube subscribers. Jeez. Okay. And that's crazy. Yeah. And he has like Super Bowl number, uh, you know, YouTube videos and things. It's wild. But he's he's really great at like he's really figured out how to tap into the attention um, of the YouTube audience and, uh, you know, really kind of kind of game the system. I mean, he makes really good videos, but based around getting the most views, getting retention, getting all those things. So now he's he's going to a new arena, um, which is he has a show uh, with. Amazon. Um, he's giving away five million dollars, so it's a competition show. We don't know all the details. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The winner gets five million dollars, and this is the big question: is like, can his YouTube genius transfer over into television success? So, uh, so I, there's so many things I love about this. One, obviously, I'm sure Amazon took a big bet to pay this guy. Cause he's now getting out of bed for a small amount of money. No. Um, so but I he like- also famously invest millions of dollars to each video. Yeah. So he's clearly found a partner that's aligned in the way he's thinking. Historically game shows in America have been insanely successful. Like of late, I don't think they're as popular, but even, even when you turn on, TV, you still see America's Got Talent and this show and that show, The Voice, American Idol, whatever. These shows were so popular. Who wants to be a millionaire? You know, Wheel of Fortune is still going. Jeopardy is still going, right? Game shows are a big part of like American culture. I think this idea of taking this new concept for a game show, letting this young person kind of, what is he, 25 or something? Late twenties, I think. Yeah, yeah. letting yeah, him young. take a take a crack at this genius. I think it's going to work. It's I I hundred yeah. percent think it's going to work, but I also think it's a little dystopian. 
Because did you way? see the the box thing that he did, where everyone was like in a box and whoever lasted the longest? Oh yeah, he does a lot of those. Got the money. Yeah, it's I a think little that was like gamesy. And n- not to be the wokey, it's just that's America. Like yeah. anyone will do anything for money. Yes. And if you're okay with him taking advantage of that, that's fine. Why is he taking advantage of it? That's the same. He no, because like there's a there's a twenty years ago when the Lakers were doing uh, the run with Shaq and Kobe, Power 106 said if someone got a tattoo of Shaq on their face, yeah, you get tickets to the game, yeah, and someone did it, yeah. Well, that's like a permanent lifelong. Like, what's the difference between Survivor? <laughs> I agree. It's all a little, I think he, he's taking it a little step further, not saying I have some moral qualms with it. It's just yeah. kind of, we're taking advantage of the, the consumer. I don't know. I, I could be totally off. I think on tattoo this. on the forehead is taking advantage. Cause that's a permanent, <laughs> like you, you fucked yourself up for money. <laughs> this, there's no permanent damage. I get it. Like I get the critique, but I think it's what we do in so many different aspects in so many shows and if you don't want to do it don't do it no one's you're not losing anything if you don't like what would be fucked up is like if mr b showed up at your house and he's like if you're the last to uh keep your hand on the box you get to keep your house if not you lose everything like it's not because <laughs> like know. we did you we you watch squid games right squid games squid games no. yeah mm-hmm. i don't watch it uh it's pretty crazy he's just trying to bring it to real life they were dying. He's not they saying you have to die. <laughs> I think this we're just getting just, closer to that. Right. It, I think the fact that it's one like ruling rich, like there's a face, like Survivor, there's not a face. I, yeah. I think it's a little psychological. There's not a face saying, I put you all on this island and you don't get off until you whatever. Um, I think the fact that there's a face and 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 whatever makes it a little weird looking, but I think it's fine. The guy's curing blindness and stuff. I mean, let him go. Yeah, Changing I'm okay chocolate. with it. I mean, I'm not saying okay, I'm not okay go. with it. I gotta go. We gotta go. I gotta go too. I, I, are, you, are you doing yeah. shout outs on it? Yeah, I don't know. I'll do the shout outs, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Everyone have a great rest of your week. Um, see you later. Anand's gonna do shout outs. Shout out from River to the squad, killing it every week. I don't miss an episode of the pod and I create a subreddit for all the Cathy's to be able to talk and debate topics for the week. And we will put the link in our Instagram and our bio. And so everyone can participate. <laughs>